didn't call nobody who was worried about you. Well, that makes three of us. Oh, I'm lying. We're going to call to order the uh, regular meeting of the East Point Community Schools Board of Education, January 23rd, 2023, at, I think that's about 6.33. Sounds about right. Uh, before we get started and we call the roll, I just want to remind everybody, please turn the volume down on your phones so that we don't hear them. Somebody kind of just gave me a little <laughs> reminder up here <laughs> to say that. I think I'm going to pass that reminder along and try to make it regular at the beginning of each meeting. Um, if uh, you could please call the roll, Secretary Williams. Okay. Uh, Dr. Early? Here. Roscoe? Here. Ed, Eddie? Present. Mary? Here. Uh, Cassie? Here. Ed? Here. John? Here. Is that right? Okay, if we could please all stand. Dan will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next we need a motion for approval of the agenda. Place forth a motion that we approve the agenda as written. Is there support? Support. Please call the vote. Okay. Roscoe? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Addie? Yes. Mary? No. John? Yes. Cassie? Yes. And Ed, yes. Motion carries. Next, we need a motion for the consent agenda. Place forth a motion that we approve the consent agenda as written. Is there support? Support. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Okay. Roscoe? Yes. Ed, yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Addie? Approve and support. Mary? No. Cassie? Yes. Uh, John? Yes. Motion carries. Next we have Superintendent's report. Superintendent Gibson. Hi, good evening ladies and gentlemen of the Board of Education as well as, us, as those joining us online. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody that it's School Board Appreciation Month, 
Uh, and for the school board members, they did get to see a glimpse of the video that we are in the process of creating, celebrating our amazing school board, and it looks fantastic. So I can't wait to share that with you. Um, also today, uh, the East Point High School has invited all of the school board members. The culinary students would like to cook for you on February. <laughs> Mr. Roscoe remembered those amazing <laughs> homemade butter doodles last year. Um, and so that will be, if our school board members could please mark their calendars for February 7th. Uh, the culinary students have already begun preparations and are learning to set table as well as prepare a meal in your honor to say thank you. So if the board could please uh, sh reserve February 7th. Um, congratulations to us, East Point Community Schools, as well as East Point City. Um, CBS Detroit featured a story on our grant, uh, being grant recipients of the mayor's SRO grant. East Point Community Schools received a $186,000 grant over three years. It will be 50% of the salary of a school resource officer in partnership with the city of East Point. Um, the board is aware, but the community needs to know that uh, the school district and the community of East Point are making an intentional effort to work together, um, not only for the safety of our community, but the learning involved for our staff and students. Unfortunately, um, the CBS Detroit story isn't playing well with sound, but I will share that link um, to all of the board. Um, George Ruhib and myself, um, were interviewed by CBS as part of their story on the governor's um, SRO grant. Um, we had a successful count day audit. Uh, for those of you unaware, you know, we have a audit process after the fall count. And I'd like to thank and draw attention to our fabulous secretaries at the high school and the middle school and the Virtual Academy, as well as Christina Govon, who is our pupil accounting um, supervisor. Uh, they did a fabulous job. The auditors, all retired educators, said it was the best audit that they have had coming to East Point Community Schools in six years. Um, so what they do is they pull a sampling of students and check schedules. Um, and under the leadership of Christina Govon, it was a very successful audit. So thank you to all of those staff. Um, here's a brief picture of our middle school basketball and cheerleading girls. Uh, boys basketball for middle school is wrapping up and I, you can tell that those young ladies are super proud to be <laughs> cheerleaders and we are graced this evening with the presence of Jennifer Thrift who is coaching those cheerleaders. We do have a question, why aren't they wearing uniforms? So we all have to get with you, Ms. Thrift, to answer that question that a community member posted on Facebook. Um, but thank you to the teachers involved. Pleasant View um, has been holding regular parent meetings. And this particular picture um, is a meeting that Principal Trice held where she talked and with parents about academics, about the testing that's coming up, um, but also invited the Macomb um, truancy offers to come and to talk to our parents about the importance of regular school attendance. So thank you Pleasant View and Principal Trice for all your work involving parents in our community. Um, and then a huge thank you to the Board of Education. We had 100% board participation in the 20th annual Martin Luther King Fellowship Breakfast. Um, it was a great morning together with our board. I, I got to see Vicki Wands who's Wyans, <laughs> gosh, Wyans. Close enough. Uh, not close enough, but uh, I still have that video, and uh, she really did a nice job. And it was a great time to connect with our school board, as well as the city of East Point was present, and a number of other um, people proud about our community and celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. Upcoming events. Um, second semester schools of choice is being accepted through January 27th. Uh, just a reminder for the community that we are unlimited seats for secondary. However, we are limited in our elementary school spots. 
Um, if we are unable to fill all of the requests for schools of choice, there will be a lottery for the remaining seats available in our elementary schools. January 26th, we have a half day for students and a half day for records day for teachers. And on January 27th, this Friday, it will be no school for students and a professional learning day for our teachers. Um, for the board, uh, that is a big kickoff to the iReady math implementation for our elementary teachers. February 2nd, we will have a Gleaners food distribution. And then midwinter break is February 17th to the 20th. And that concludes the superintendent's report for this evening. Okay, next on the agenda is first hearing of the public. Does anyone wish to be heard? Does anyone wish to be heard? Seeing none, we'll open and close that and we'll call that at 6.43, I guess. Also. Next we have discussion action, business operations. Good evening, well, uh, Robert Carlesso is coming to the podium. I wanted to let you know that Jeff Atkins extends his apology. He could not be with us here this evening, uh, but Mr. Carlesso will be sharing. Um, a proposed bond timeline um, with the Board of Education. Good evening. Um, but in 2021, the district hired partners in architecture to do an assessment of our buildings where they toured all our bu buildings with their professional staff and uh, came up with a list of high priority items, or actually all items, whether high, medium, or, or low priority, and they put a cost associated with. Uh, uh, bring our, our buildings up to standards uh, that are acceptable. And the cost at that time in 2021 was about $51, $52 million. So we know we have some needs in our district. Uh, shortly after that, we passed a sinking fund that, that generates about um, three mills a year, which is about $1.5 million. So we've been chipping away at you know the greatest needs in our district. And we've also had some ESSER, three, ESSER funds, you know, the COVID money from the federal government that we've used to address some of our building infrastructure needs also. So, but the timeline needs to be sped up because the longer we let these things sit, the greater they deteriorate and the more it costs in the long run to address these issues. So we recently learned that uh, both the city of East Point and the city of Warren are having mayoral primary uh, in August of this year. So uh, we think this is a good time to go to the community or to at least to explore this bond issue. Uh, and see if the voters will approve it. Um, we put together a team consisting of professionals like from Partners Architecture, which is the district's architectural firm, and Barton Malo, which is the district construction management firm. So the next is, uh, like Christina said, uh, some slides. Uh, we're gonna go over just like the, the events that are gonna occur between now and the August election date. So we have to establish the goals and guiding principles for the bond program. Um, some of the needs that we preliminary identified are playgrounds, parking lots, roofs, traffic flow improvements around our buildings, uh, classroom remodeling, secure entrances at the middle school and high school. Um, usually when you do parking lots, it's a good idea to update your secure, your secure cameras and exterior lighting because you have to go underneath the parking lot surface. So we'll, We'll, get, we'll look at upgrading those. We had a walkthrough today uh, with the partner, with partners in architecture, Barton Mallow, and an administrative team where we walked through the high school uh, just to get a feel for the needs over there. Oh, thank you. So, um, so then in February, we, um, Professional teams get to update that facilities assessment and use 2023 and future pricing uh, to get like a, the size of what needs to be done in our district, and the, the dollars that we'll need to spend. And then uh, we have several meetings set up. So the next bond committee will be meeting on February 2nd to review those preliminary bond worksheets. And then the board, uh, there'll be a board meeting on February 13th We'll, we'll provide bond planning information to the board. And then we'll come back, the team will meet and refine those, and then um, have another update to the board on February 27th. 
So as you can see, the board is involved several times a month during this bond process. Into March, um, we have a couple board planning meetings on the 2nd, 16th, and 30th. On March 13th, there's going to be the first draft of the bond proposal. Um, it will have, like, our plan of work in it. And so then we'll come to the board, <coughs> and then, uh, you know, you'll have your input into it. And, if, and then we'll have the formal final document that we'll bring to the tre Department of Treasury in April. So on April 10th, um, we have a meeting with the Department of Treasury to go over our application. That's an afternoon meeting. That evening, there's a board meeting also, which will bring back that formal document that's approved by Treasury to the board for their approval. And then on April 24, um, we'll have another update if needed for the board. And then we'll start an informal campaign to get this ballot initiative passed and that will occur at the end of April into May so actually in on May 8th is uh, when we'll ask the board to actually call for an election so this would be the board's formal approval to put a bond initiative a bond proposal on the August ballot from there uh, you know we'll engage professionals and our in-house marketing team to kick off an informational campaign explaining to the community you know, the needs of our district, um, you know, demonstrating how we've been good stewards of their money in the past, and you know, um, demonstrating how the improvements would benefit our students and community, and we'll kind of just take it from there uh, through, through August election date. June is uh, when the absentee ballots are available, so we want to make sure we get the information out to the public before that date, because an uh, increasing number of our voters are voting absenteeism with an absentee ballot. And then throughout <laughs> July, we'll continue with the informational campaign. And then August date would be the election date. Do you have any questions on the timeline? The bigger piece I want to point out to the Board of Education and to the community is that um, it is our intent to set up an ongoing legacy where we are paying attention to our facilities um, monitoring the cost of those facilities and then planning for a regular bond program to be coming forward to our constituents. Um, we have, as a district, let too many things be unaddressed. Mm -hmm. um, and so the intent of going forward with a bond now is also about the mills that are going to fall off. Um, we have a bond that is ending um, and would be coming off of taxpayers. It is our intent now, while we have not finalized how many mills we would ask for, it is our intent at least to request that the minimum is carried forward. Um, and what we'll be doing is working on determining the projects that we feel are the best use of taxpayer dollars, as well as engaging in February, we are looking to start a facility study team. And we would be looking at engaging, um, and we were speaking this evening about how we engage a board member or two on possibly sitting on that committee because these long-term decisions will have ramifications long after Christy Gibson is, you know, superintendent of East Point Community Schools. And it is our goal to set our community and our schools up for long-term success um, and how we are good fiscal stewards. And this was a big, um, conversation point in strategic planning and I think the other thing that we would be remiss in mentioning is any priorities that our team um, picks out now will be priorities that have started to be defined for us in the board strategic plan um, becoming the heart of the community and supporting the holistic well-being of our community as well as our students um, what questions might the board have for either myself or Mr. Carlesso. And we'll be sure to bring Jeff Atkins mm -hmm. back to a board meeting as well and apologize that he couldn't be here this evening. Do we have any in particular? I do. Um, exactly what will this mean for taxpayers in terms of any oh. so what we're, increase or 
Well, what we're thinking of doing is having no increase. So we have debt that's being paid off at this time, and then the new debt would come on, replacing the old debt so there'd be no change in taxes. That's, that's the strategy we're, we're leaning towards. Obviously, you know, we're also sizing up how much um, it would cost taxpayers if we did a one mil increase or a two mil increase or a three mil increase. And we'll have that information for the board, but at this point, we think it's just prudent to have a renewal without a tax increase. Okay. Um, I, I just had it. Um, the list that you had of things that need to be done, that's not the priority list. That's just saying. That's just like that, some of the what, really obvious things that. Okay, because security interests was at the bottom, so I'm like, wait a minute, shouldn't that be closer to no, the no, top? No, no, it's not but a priority. That's not, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. that's, that's all I want. Yeah. I, I do like a nice elementary playground, though, Dr. Early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just had one question. I think you had March 13th as a day that it will be brought to the board. Uh, yeah, first draft of the bond program. Yes. Um, I just want to make sure we will have that in our background information before that meeting as well, too, so that people will have time to digest it. And, because if they got dropped on us the, day, the night of the meeting, right. it's going to be awful hard for people to ask. Right informed questions, I guess right. you could say. Right. So I, I just want to make sure that we'll, yeah. we'll have that because that's a Board of Education meeting on March 13th, so we would get it a week or so ahead of yeah. that. And then that would give people the opportunity to digest it and ask questions of the administration and stuff like that if they need information. That's correct. You know, two reasons. One is, is it's hard to ask informed questions, but the other thing is, is I'm pretty, I try to make sure the meetings are as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. So yep. I don't want us to be here asking questions for, you know, hours and hours and hours. Right. And the other thing I'd like to also point out is the April 10th board meeting. We have a meeting with Treasury that afternoon. And because of the timeline is so stringent as far as, like, when you have to apply for the uh, put your election notification with the county, there's a board e meeting that evening. But you'll have a template of that that resolution that will come for you in advance. So even though it's not the exact one that will, you will be asked to prove that night, the week before when you get your board package, you'll have a template of that. Okay. Um, it was not our intent to do an August election, but since one was added right. um, due to the mayoral primary, our team felt that we needed to go ahead and move on it quickly. Yeah. Um, we are also prepared, if we're not ready to go to August, to consider taking it to the November ballot as well. And August uh, financially is beneficial for the district as well, too, because we don't have to. Because if we tried to get a special election ourselves, we'd have right. to pay it for all. It is cost prohibitive for so us. So basically, to we can tag election. along on another correct. election. That's right. Mm -hmm. us, there's a minimal cost to the district. That's correct. This also that. allows us enough time that if um, what we put forward in August does not go through, it also gives us enough time to be ready to go for a May 2024 ask. Um, henceforth us bringing it to you now. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Carlesso, um, since there's no action on the bond planning presentation, uh, would you like to go ahead and talk about the box lift truck, sure. which is an item for action? Yeah, so actually we have a photo of the box lift truck here. Uh, it's kind of <coughs> like a U-Haul, only with a, uh, with a lift on the back. Uh, the district used to have a, a lift truck, like when I was here in the early 2000s, we had one. It, really old at that time and I think shortly maybe around 2006 7 we uh, we've retired that vehicle and since that time we've been basically using a pickup truck and a trailer uh, to haul things around which usually requires two or more people because those items are having you have to lift them onto the trailer and off the trailer so uh, you know Kerry Weissop recognized this need when he came on board and they did some research um, using the my deal pricing consortium and the price for a, a new box truck is 68386 And uh, that's, again, through the My Deal uh, program, and Gordon Ford's a participant in that. So we have attached to this is specifications from Gordon Ford. I'd also like to mention that this past summer, the district sold some surplus equipment out of our warehouse, and we uh, had proceeds of almost $40,000 um, from that sale. So we kind of look at this as netting those sale proceeds against the 68,000, and the net cost of this is 28,500 out of the general fund. 
So we're asking the board at this time to approve the purchase of this box truck. Uh, where we believe it will increase efficiency and employee safety. I make a motion that we approve this um, to purchase of the box truck with this with the lift. Support. <laughs> okay. My my question is, <laughs> my question is, the funds that you're talking about, they haven't been allocated to anywhere else, have they? No, they're just in our general just fund. Just in the general fund. Right. Okay. I just want to make sure we right. they're going to apply to this. And the fact that this is going to take nine months to get is just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but That's at least it'll be on the way. Yes. If it's approved. Yes. Question. If it's if it's approved, uh, which it will be, are there any additional costs once this is purchased? Warranties? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, there'll probably be uh, minimal costs, like to get the district decals on it, you know, logo, that type of thing. Uh, but I'm not aware of any additional costs. Okay. And it's coming with. Uh, is it fully loaded, or is it something we have to? No, and this would be uh, as it would be operational right away with the lift. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk not, to, not about the truck because actually, to me, for $68,000 brand new, that looks pretty good to me. I mean, um, I, w I was wondering about the driver. Is then does anybody have to have any additional special licensing? To drive this vehicle versus I, the pickup, I don't believe so. But I don't think there is either, um, because I, I think, think they have to already have. What is, it's not a CDL, but there's another chauffeur's license or something like that. You know, I can check on every. I'm not familiar with what's. Required. But if so, one of our people can get the training yeah. necessary to do yes. that if they had to. Is yes. That less than 24? I don't remember what the length was. That less than 24. 24 foot. Uh -huh. uh, let me check. Yes. I think you just need the chauffeur's yeah. license. Yeah. So but we will definitely we check into that and make sure we have all the credentials in place for our people. But I'm sure they already have a chauffeur as far as yeah. pickup truck driver. I just kind of know mm -hmm. they used to drive similar. Okay. <laughs> Before, that's why I was saying, you know, if it's a semi, then all of a sudden that's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. You know, something that much, is much bigger. And I do know that we do have to have the markings on the side of the truck for it to be legal on the road, you know, because either you got to have your organization's name and address and all that stuff on the side or you the have to have numbers. the u.s mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. department of transportation number on the side or something okay it's, i've been down that route before so okay okay i'm good anybody else i heard you excuse me mr uh, president i heard you say sixty thousand, but isn't it what well with the 40 but i'm just saying as far as the list price oh, to okay. the district it's 68.5 but since we have forty thousand right. dollars okay. in revenue from you know okay I don't know what you called the sale. Uh, it was just surplus. <coughs> we cleaned surplus out the warehouse sale. this summer, and we got rid of a lot of old, old stuff. So really, the impact to the district is twenty-eight five. But I'm just saying, overall, to me, I'm I'm looking at that as a truck, and I'm thinking sixty-eight five. That's really not that bad a deal, mm -hmm. I don't think. For a new, mm -hmm. I mean, I was just kind of looking at me and saying, uh, well, I, I I do pull a camper on occasion, I, I, <laughs> but I want to buy one for me. <laughs> to and put a trailer hitch on the back of it because yeah, it sure would make getting the camp bikes camp. in and out of the camper a lot yeah. easier. You just have to roll them up on the tailgate and flip it up in there. Yeah. So I'm thinking a used one like that. I don't know. Somebody might tell me different. I don't think it'll park in front of the house that well. <laughs> Anything else? Look at me. <laughs> please go. Please call the vote. Please. Okay. Dr. Early. Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Uh, Mary? Yes. Miss Mary? Miss Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. And Mr. Williams? Yes. Did you get Eddie? Yes. Yeah. Eddie? <laughs> Miss Eddie? Yes. Yeah. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Next, we have curriculum. Yes, and that's why we have a few people here today. Yes. <laughs> Excited people, I hope. Wonderful smiles. Good evening, everyone. Um, oh, let me move this down. I'm a little shorter than you, Mr. Carlisa. 
So good evening. Um, I'm here this evening to present uh, a proposal for the Art of Education University. Let me get to my next slide here with this fancy gadget. Nope, oh, I went too far. So my goal this evening is to present the proposal for the purchase of the Art of Education University. Um, as we know, uh, the arts are very important in the development of students. Um, we, are, we are fortunate tonight to have literally half of our art department here tonight. We have all, um, all levels actually represented as well. I'd like to introduce uh, Emily Gonzalez, who's at Crescentwood and Bellevue, Jennifer Thrift, who is at East Point Middle School, Stephanie Jovanowski, who is from the high school. And we even have a former art teacher, uh, Ms. Diana Moses, who works in the capacity of uh, mentoring some of our, our new art and, and specials teachers. So thank you for coming. Um, and they will, they're available for some questions if, at the end if you, if you would like to ask them anything. We've been able to, gosh, I'm really bad at this. Christy, you might want, there we go. So we know that the arts are, are pretty essential. Um, and we, I'm very proud to say that we have been growing our programming. This year um, is really the first year I think we've had a department this size in a really long time. Um, the visual arts teach many lessons that we want our kids to learn, things like practice makes perfect, small differences can have large effects, collaboration leads to uh, creativity, they, kids become stronger communicators, risk takers, problem solvers, criti critical thinkers, and so much more. Um, in addition, research shows us that there are some pretty impressive benefits on school culture in areas of student motivation attitudes and even attendance when students participate in arts, fine arts programs. Um, they encourage many students to stay in school, succeed in school, and this leads to future success. Thank you. Uh, access to the arts is also one of the five subcomponents representing the school quality and student success um, in our state's accountability uh, index. And it's a data point that we look at um, when we are um, receiving scores uh, through that accountability index, and we especially with grades K through eight. This school year, we're, we've been fortunate enough to be able to expand, as I said, um, and we currently have six art teachers three of which are here tonight. The resource that I ask you to consider tonight is really a game changer for both teachers and students. The Art of Education resources support our district's strategic plan to provide guaranteed and viable curriculum aligned to standards. And I feel that this resource also directly connects to our newly adopted motto, um, empower, care, and succeed. The purchase of this resource will empower our teachers to deliver state-of-the-art, um, no pun intended, um, state-of-the-art lessons to the students of East Point Community Schools. The Art of Education University was started by art teachers for art teachers. So that makes it kind of unique. Um, okay, the proposal that you received in your board packets outlines what's included in this quote. You can see that on the screen there, we have a five-year subscription for our six art teachers, uh, as well as our administrative team, um, to the Art of Education University curriculum suite. And this includes Flex Curriculum, uh, which are resources for, the art, uh, for art education. So it includes um, on-demand resources, including lesson plans. And I'll, I'll dig a little deeper in, a, in the next couple of slides about what actually is included in that Flex Curriculum piece. And then we also will be um, hopefully receiving the pro learning packs, which are personalized professional learning. So this really is going to support the art educators. So it's these two uh, pieces work in tandem. And then we will be getting a comprehensive support package called this uh, the school success package, which provides us with a school success manager, um, which will provide training, new teacher onboarding, um, it'll help us progress monitor and make sure that, that there's ongoing support over the course of these five years. Flex curriculum handles the what to teach side of things. Pro learning really will handle and address the how to teach the arts. Um, 
All right, so in Flex, as you can see, it's going to include um, a, a lot of pieces there that are, that are important in the world of curriculum. It's going to include lesson plans, uh, scope and sequence that'll help, uh, help us kind of map out the K-12 programming so that um, as our teachers are planning to teach, you know, an art teacher may teach multiple grade levels depending on the day of the week, right? So um, this will ensure, these documents will really ensure that that all students aren't doing the same art projects year after year after year. Because who really needs a pot holder, right, every, every year when, when students make those. So um, it's some of these sample materials I'm showing you here, this would be an example of a fourth grade scope and sequence, which shows you all of the units that are created and that we would have access to. Um, you can, we can scroll through these, please. This is a fourth grade course overview. That would be an example of a, of a unit. And notice that it has, um, every, all of the resources are linked within these documents. So the, the materials um, also would include, um, sorry, some lesson plans that, would, that, would, that teachers can connect to other curricular uh, subjects, such as STEM or STEAM. Um, they, students can be learning about different cultures, the world around them, and some social emotional learning pieces. I think we're getting a little bit ahead. Hold on, wait for me there, Ms. Gibson. Um, it also works. <laughs> it also works with Google Classroom, which our which our schools utilize as well, which is very nice because not all of our curriculum pieces play nicely with Google Classroom. Um, all right, let's catch up to you here. Okay. So the, the links are nice because it is a very user-friendly platform and I think our, our staff would agree. The Pro Learning, you can move on to that next one now. Pro Learning resources answer the question again, how, do, how am I gonna teach this? So it provides the on-demand on professional development for our teachers. It's relevant, personalized, equitable, high quality, and continuous, which means it's always available. If a teacher needs to brush up on a certain skill, they can find a tutorial or a video that's been created by another professional art teacher and watch that so that they're prepared for the students that, that will be in their classroom the next day. For district professional development days, our art teachers can learn things that are relevant to their department alone. I'd like to introduce Stephanie Jovanowski again. Um, she started last school year as our district's only art teacher and she has utilized um, these materials uh, in the past, and she recently completed a master's degree through the Art of Ed University too, which they do have this other side piece that is a, a pretty amazing opportunity. So this quote that you see up here is, um, I guess, Stephanie's testimonial, um, some of the things that she likes about it. And actually, I think we had to condense that because she had many, many, many great things to say about this resource. Okay, the next slide has data that um, the Art of Education University um, provided us with, and it really speaks to the same satisfaction level that Stephanie had shared in her quote. Um, again, if you look at some of those data points, the use of the pro packs and the pro learning piece in particular builds confidence in, in the subject matter, it helps teachers become more engaged when they're teaching, and it really meets the, the needs of a diverse uh, population of learners. So finally, the proposal that you have in your board packet, uh, again, is for <clears throat> the flex and pro uh, components, <clears throat> excuse me, together. These are very comprehensive curriculum solution for our art instructors. Um, it is $24,470 for five years, which would be an investment of $4,494 per year, or $749 per teacher per year. And that again would include the flex curriculum, the pro learning piece, and the and this, uh, manager, the support, ongoing support. So I thank you for your time and consideration this evening. If you have any questions for me or our art staff, we're, we're happy to answer. Um, I would move that the Board of Education approve the Art of Education curriculum as presented. Support. Question. Um, well, 
I get to go first because I made the motion and she gets to go second. <laughs> I'm just giving her a hard time, Mr. Russell. Oh, yeah, it's 22. Oh, that, that, yeah, he 22, just wanted clarification. 22. Oh. You said 24. That's yeah, right. that's what I was that Good catch. I go Thank by you. what's printed. I, didn't, I figured it was just a slip of the tongue. Um, I only have a comment to, to me um, <laughs> having uh, a greater influence of our curriculum within our district uh, pays, pays huge benefits to our students uh, not only in the things that you cited but I don't think you even necessarily got into what it actually does to the brain right and how it makes the brain function a little bit differently and makes them more effective learners so I don't think you even really got into that but I that's did the not. Other thing. so the more art education that we can have um, the better as well as the better that we can deliver it that's also a really good thing as well too because the more effective we are at delivering it the better for our students as well and Absolutely. overall people have a tendency to look at art say, eh, you know some people yeah, what art you know I mean what's that have to do with math it has a lot to do with math and science mm -hmm. and, and reading and all that other stuff too because it does make the students be able to perform and like you said it increases attendance and other measurable things like that right. which the more they're in their classes and the more they're in our schools the better so I just had a comment I, I, had, I don't have a question I have a comment also so I been on the board six years one or seven years and I have been asking for some type of art education program since I started so I'm super excited I went on the YouTube channel I went on the website I listen to the programs because I'm an avid crafter. I love anything arts. I want to know how I can get a membership. Like, I want to do this too. Let me know what day y'all doing some projects so I can come. Like, uh, I'll drive you there by truck. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I'm super excited. When I seen this on the agenda item, I was super excited. I called the superintendent. Like, are we doing this? Is this really a vote? Like, is this something I've been asking about it for years? So I'm so happy for y'all. Invite me to your classroom because I come. <laughs> I had one light question. Johnny is struggling trying to be a part of the. Uh, well, Johnny's struggling trying to be a part of the art uh, world community. What program or what process you have that someone wants to be a part of? It's like we're moving in the 21st century, but they want to be a part of it. They're moving a little slow. Can you bring us? paint a picture of how, how they would be part of this? That's a great question, and I will, I will ask the, uh, the staff here to also um, address that if anyone wants to come up. But I, I do will say that um, one of the things that I didn't have time to mention is when, we, when you look at the resources, there are, um, there are differentiated lessons in there as well. So each, each uh, lesson, the teachers can search by, um, by the art, art the media, they can search by the art elements, the design elements. Um, if there's a particular artist that they want to study, they can um, search by that. So if the student does have something that's kind of interesting, like the Van Gogh uh, exhibit that was just here in Detroit, and maybe they're really, that would be something that could hook them. They could search just by that and kind of differentiate and give that student um, some, some lessons with that. Um, it's, sure, come on up, Jennifer. But it's really, it's so personalized and so um, user friendly that that they could easily. There's a resource there that's going to help hook that student. Go ahead. I was just going to add that um, I have a, a degree in art. I've got a master's of fine art um, at Wayne State University. Um, one of the things they do um, push with this program is the innovation. Um, of the art world too. So you're also looking at professional artists' bios that these kids can actually look at and reference. It also talks about, um, it also has like a huge um, category for uh, um, vocabulary and using those terms that they use in the contemporary art world. Um, both, you know, if, you, if they want to go into commercial work, you know, illustrating, or if they want to go into the fine art world, it'll give them those tools to, you know, perform. And the levels that they have um, are like uh, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. So little Johnny, um, <laughs> <laughs> if he really likes, uh, if he really enjoys art, um, and I have a 
another student in my class that doesn't enjoy art and they're at the beginning level, I can give, I can accommodate little Johnny and push him and then also accommodate somebody who's at the beginning level. Well, that, that was one of my questions. Suppose some of our children are coming with some um, drawing uh, inside of them that they want to express. How would you work with them with that? Or would you just <clears throat> keep it on a level where they are or something that you would give to them? Someone like to address that? You almost answered it, but then you, you left me off a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, they can, we can customize it. Okay. And so um, what I like about it too is that I can, um, like my, my classrooms always vary. Each classroom, each period. And so you've got different levels. And I always like to give them one-on-one -on -one attention. And this kind of allows you to gauge their interest in art. So if they really like drawing, painting, anything, it gives them like a, a nice little like platform and me a platform that I can communicate and help them develop their creativity and their style. Okay, thank you. I have a comment to make. Um, I am co-director of uh, EAST, East Point Advocates Supporting Equality. And so for the two years that we've been trying to get this program off the ground, one of the things we want to do, because it does involve the installation of uh, a monument, we want to be able to provide scholarships for art students, especially for those who um, can write an essay regarding what equality means and their perception of the actual monument once it's installed. So I'm really excited to see that happen because we were wondering how we were going to choose students uh, in order to have a selection mm -hmm. uh, from which to choose in order to get that scholarship. I think it will be very beneficial to the community uh, and the city to have some homegrown talent displayed. And I think that everyone can appreciate that. Absolutely. Anything else? Please call the vote. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Ms. Rayford? Yes. Ms. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. And Mr. Williams? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, then we have, um, we'll vote on them separately, but we were provided in our background information. These, um, you want to go ahead and explain exactly what these are? Sure. Um, we, the district has been offering a 403B annuity investment for all of our employees for a number of years. It is offered through Omni TSA. Um, we would like to expand the opportunities to allow our employees to do advanced um, financial planning for their retirement and add the option that employees can choose to also contribute to a 457B. So before the Board of Education this evening, there are two resolutions. One, to adopt the 457B plan. Two, to amend our existing contract with Omni TSA to include the 403B and the 457B, thus expanding the um, possibilities our employees have for planning for their retirement. Anybody want to make a motion on number one? Place forth the motion to accept uh, the resolution to adopt uh, 457B plan for uh, ECS employees, retirement savings plan. Support. I just didn't turn my head fast enough. I heard the voice, but I didn't see who it was. Any other questions? Yes. Back to early. <laughs> you got a question down here. What's that? Question. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Uh, just looking at the uh, the date on that, I mean, it's not, I'm going to vote for it. I'm just curious as to one date said um, 
effective January 1st, but we're not signing it until today. Um, the effective date is going to be one month after the board takes um, action to adopt the plan, so employees would be able to contribute a month later. It says January 1st because our cabinet and executive team have been working on the 457B plan for about four months now, um, and we intended to bring it to the Board of Education sooner, but found some things that okay. we wanted corrected. I was just curious yep. about that. I was like, Anything else? Second question. Anything else? Please call the vote. Um, Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Ms. Grunberg? Yes. Ms. Rayford? Yes. Ms. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. And it, yes. Motion carries. Is there a motion for number two? Place both the motion to amend the existing contract with OMNI uh, TSA to include 403B and for a 457B plans. Support. I don't think there'd be too many questions on this. That's right. <laughs> this is just to amend. Please call the vote. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Uh, Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. And Dr. Early? Yes. Okay, next we have second hearing of the public. We'll open that up at 7.23. Does anyone wish to be heard? Anyone wish to be heard? We'll close it at 7.23. Next we have trustees' announcements. we we'll start down there with Mrs. Grunberg. I just want to say congratulations. I love the arts. And I also want to say congratulations to the new hires. And that's it. Ms. Rayford. Um, really looking forward to seeing what the art does. I also hope that there's a writing component <laughs> to all of this. And um, I just wanted to say one thing about the MLK breakfast. Um, I was interesting. The food was good. Um, I would hope that in the future the guest speakers would be a little more cognizant of the audience. And I say that only because I've had a number of people contact me. They were offended by some things that were said. And I know nobody here has anything or control over that. I'm just throwing it out. Um, and, and I do plan to address that to the Ministerial Alliance because if we're going to do something to celebrate someone's life, we need to make sure that we're not offending other members um, that are sitting in the audience. And I think this is the second year that that's happened. So just wanted to say that. And if anybody in the audience is at home listening, hopefully they'll take that for what it's worth. And welcome for the new hires. I am not against you. I'm simply against the way it's listed in the agenda. So I need to say that so people won't think I don't want people working here. <laughs> um, and hopefully, oh, there was another question that was asked of me. At any time soon, will we be bringing students, all students back into the classroom five days a week? Because I understand there's some concern about that. And um, I don't like having questions posed to me when I don't know answers. So I'm throwing it out there. Thank you. Mr. Roscoe. Congratulations to the new hires. Ecstatic and excited about the art program that's about to launch or already has launched. Uh, we're moving right on into the 21st century. I, I'm looking forward to sitting just in the back of the room one day and just taking it in. I think it's going to be great, a great experience. Um, everybody, just thank you for giving me an opportunity to serve as a uh, board member. Um, thank you guys and community for sending us to the classes and, and the education that we, we received 
just want to say thank you all the way across the board and uh, thank thank God for a great administration and, and a leader and, and our um, superintendent Christina and uh, great working with this board just thank you so, Dr. Early um, I want to say um, I want to say thank you so much to the secretaries that worked on the audit. Um, that had to be a hard job to do and to get to be rated as one of the best audits that shows the strength and the work that you put into it. For the Art of University, I'm just super excited for y'all. Like, I can't wait to see what our children can do. I think that if you cannot um, express yourself one way in sports, band, music, arts, you, you have to have a way to express yourself. And so to add the arts program and to make sure that our teachers learn what they need to, you know, because so much things are changing and just looking at the, I, um, the AI stuff, it's like that's a whole advanced situation that children have to learn. And so it's really wonderful to see that they will be able to compete. And, and be able to be out there with the rest of the world with all the big stuff and kids that draw, write, show any kind of creative side, it, it brings out a different emotion in them because I'm, I'm an avid crafter. I love to craft. I can make stuff out of anything. And the ability to show people my work feels better than actually doing it. To give somebody a picture that I've drawn or colored or painted or whatever. Like, I'm super excited. So I'm glad this came up. I'm telling you, I have been asking for it forever. So I'm super excited, and I can't wait to see what y'all do with it. Congrats to the new hires. And I'm excited to see the arts at work. That's it. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, board. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited uh, for the new art program. And I'm especially, I uh, want to piggyback off of what Dr. Early said. Thank you for the secretaries and everybody that put their hands to the plow to get this audit done uh, and continue to push this uh, school board and school system forward in a positive direction. I know it's not always easy, but it's worth it for our children. Um, welcome to all the new hires. And again, that was a very uh, informal, informative pre uh, presentation. And uh, again, Happy New Year. Let's have a great, safe New Year. Thank you. Okay, and I'll go last. First off, as far as the CTE luncheon, um, I would strongly suggest that if you can make it, make it. And uh, don't be afraid to bring a cup of wear to take some home with you because according to last year's portions, if it's anything the same, <laughs> there's going to be plenty of leftovers to take home for an additional lunch. Um, and they made everything from scratch last year. I remember it was chicken Alfredo. They pounded out the chicken. They breaded it. They did the whole thing. Uh, they made the noodles from scratch. So everything was from scratch. It was uh, fabulous. Um, I always tell people, uh, restaurant quality, I mean, it was it was as good as you'd get anywhere. Um, the SRO. Um, can't wait to have them on board. I think that uh, it's something been kind of missing. We used to at one time have uh, D.A.R.E. involved in our, in our school district to where we had law enforcement were engaging our students at that time. And I think it really helps to build bridges between law enforcement and our students so that we, you know, we understand each other and where each other's coming from, you know. And, and I think it's been missing for quite some time, and I'm excited to have an SRO involved in ours. And, you know, I mean, there is the truancy issue. They'll be addressing some of the truancy issues, I'm sure, right? As far as, because right now we, we outsource our truancy. But... We, I mean, they'll be addressing, you know, the particulars and stuff, but to me it's the relationship that they build with our students. That's going to be the most important thing with me. Um, and then the arts, um, like I said, I said it when I commented, I can't, uh, I 
can't be strong enough on the arts because I know the impact that it has on the students and how beneficial it is for them long term. Um, I do see a face I haven't seen out here for quite some time, Miss Moses. Um, the thing that I do have to admit as far as the um, arts is concerned uh, that I kind of miss is um, when we used to have the art sculptures and the, uh, and the whole art display by our students. It, I think they used to do it at the Eastbrook Commons, did they not? Right. Yeah. And, and, and I would really like to because it was incredible to walk through and see the displays and, the, and some of the artwork that our students created. It was just unbelievable. And uh, I, I don't know, to me, sometimes we don't have the ability as a board to actually see what our students do because, you know, I mean, we're not in the classrooms, we're not working with them, so we don't see that. But when they can bring something that they've worked on and display it for us, that we can stand back and we can look and say, wow, this is what our kids are doing. This is unbelievable. Um, so I would like to see that. If there's nothing else, meeting adjourned.